Hey there. I heard you after some compliments. Come over here. Follow me into this dark alleyway. <laughs> Don't worry, you can trust me. It's all on the up and up. Ah. Hey friends, Ash here. Well, welcome back to 10 Cents. How are you? Yeah, compliments. Let's talk about them. Today what we're doing is we're talking about 25 different compliment pulling fragrances niche and designer from long lasting strong powerful fragrances that's where we're going to start and we're going to work our way along to the lighter softer fragrances that can still pull you compliments so we're going basically from one extreme to the other with uh, some average performers in the middle and then we're going to end with the fragrances that could maybe use a little pumping up so let's go ahead and jump into it let's talk about all these fragrances And I do want to share the good news once again that all three of my fragrances are going to be in every single Perfumania and every single fragrance outlet store in the United States as of January 26th. Blue Ridge is already there. This one, that's already in all the stores. But now, Jet Black Enigma, Terra Nova, those are going to be in there also. So if you have one of those nearby you, feel free to jump in, check it out, and uh, smell my fragrances, man. And you can use the code GENTS10 in stores, Perfumani or other fragrance outlet, to get $10 off. Or you can buy those from Michael Malul's website, which is linked in the description, along with all the fragrances here today. And if you shop there, use the code GENTSENSE for 20% off. Okay, we have a lot to talk about, guys, so we're going to bust through this pretty quick, okay? I'm going to have... Uh, the fragrance is listed as we work through here, so let's just jump into it on the strong side of things. The fragrances that last a long time off your skin that project very well. Let's get started with Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb Extreme. Also, you could go with the original Spice Bomb. That's quite strong as well. Both of those are very good compliment pulling fragrances. This one, of course, a good amount of spiciness to it because the name of the fragrance is Spice Bomb. And if it didn't have a bomb of spice, then it wouldn't really be Spice Bomb, would it? No. It also has black vanilla in there, which is very nice. Smooths the fragrance out, gives it a good sweetness, very appealing. One of the more hyped fall and winter time fragrances for good reason great projection great longevity and a big compliment puller after that Leighton from Parfums de Marley you could also go with Leighton Exclusif though for me the one that I think is better suited if you're just looking for compliments and nothing else is the original Leighton I think that outperforms Leighton Exclusif a little bit in that aspect though Leighton Exclusif a little bit stronger. So Leighton is another one that is sweet and spicy. That's gonna be the main thing that pulls people in here. And uh, this one has been successfully cloned very well with uh, All Har Main's Detour Noir. Next up on the docket, Stronger With You Intensely. Stronger With You Intensely, a very strong designer fragrance, which is why it's at the beginning of this video. Very sweet, once again, this one has a gourmand edge, that kind of glazed chestnut vibe that you're gonna find across the Stronger With You line. For me, off my skin, Stronger With You Intensely, gonna be the strongest of the bunch in the Stronger With You line, which in general is a line of fragrances, at least for their fall and winter releases, that does have good performance pretty much across the board. Then we got Mancera Intense Cidrat Boise, and this one I do find to be a bit of an improvement over Cidrat Boise, and I probably don't have to tell you guys how big of a compliment puller that fragrance is. Nice woodiness and a very uh, appealing fruity sweetness here. Some people will compare Intense Cidrapoise to the smell of Aventus from Creed. I don't find it particularly close to Aventus as far as like a one-to-one -one type scent profile. Still, great versatility, very nice performance here, and a big compliment puller. Another hype beast up next, Ultramall from Jean-Paul Gaultier. This stuff, fantastic performance-wise. We still have not worked our way into the more average fragrances as far as performance goes. A lot of people would relegate this to being a nighttime fragrance for fall and winter time, kind of a clubbing scent, a night out fragrance when you really want attention because it does cut through crowds very well. But I think this is more than that. During the day, it works very well. During early spring, it works well also. Nice sweetness here, the pear note, very appealing in Ultramall. Now a couple blue fragrances. We've got Y Eau de Parfum first up from Yves Saint Laurent. Now this I do think has versatility that's year round. 
You can rock this stuff whenever, daytime, nighttime, in my opinion, you can wear this, but because it does perform so well, because it is so strong and it does have a lot of sweetness, once again, a lot of these fragrances do have quite a lot of sweetness. But um, with this one, because of that performance, some people will say you can't wear it in the summer because it's too strong, it's too much. It could be overwhelming, cloying, could give you a headache, give other people headaches. I think you can wear this in summer, but you do need to dial it down. You don't wanna wear as much of it spray-wise in summer as you would in the middle of winter. At that point, it will be kind of obnoxious because it is, again, quite a strong scent. But if you want a jack of all trades type of fragrance, one that you can wear anytime that will guaranteed pull you positive attention just as much as anything else out there, Wyota Parfum should be on your short list. After that, Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. This one I feel like is right there with Y Eau de Parfum as far as performance goes, but it's in a different way. Whereas Y Eau de Parfum is on the sweeter side of things, Sauvage is not as sweet. It's more metallic, it has that ambroxan very much in the foreground of the fragrance. You do have uh, some fruit there. You got bergamot in the opening, you've got some fresh pepper. This is one of those fragrances that's almost universally beloved by, you know, the masses. People love this stuff. Uh, as long as you don't go too crazy heavy with the trigger, this is one of those scents where if you go insane with the, uh, the trigger, people might start having reactions to it in a negative way. But Sauvage does check pretty much all the boxes for what guys want nowadays. Performance, versatility, compliment factor, et cetera, et cetera. Now this next one might be a little bit divisive, slightly controversial. Some people are gonna say that this is one of the strongest fragrances in this list by far. Other people will say, no, it's one of the weakest. It does have a propensity to make people go anosmic to it where they can't pick it up, but then other people do. Enough rambling though, it's Baccarat Rouge 540. A lot of you probably guessed that. And this is from the house Maison Francis Kirkshaw. Makes heavy use of aroma chemicals. Uh, makes no excuses, no apologies for that. It has quite a bit of uh, a cotton candy kind of sweetness to it. It has saffron and precious woods as some of the notes. And of course, at this point, pretty much everybody knows Baccarat Rouge 540. This is one of the more popular niche fragrances out there. The reason for that is because it does have that versatility, that compliment factor. You nail those down, you've pretty much guaranteed yourself some sales. And this one has also been cloned to death. There are so many different versions of this out there, both from clone houses, designer houses, celebrity fragrances. So you can find a Baccarat Rouge 540 type fragrance out there at pretty much any price point at this point. Following that up with Eros Eau de Parfum, also the Eau de Toilette quite good in the performance department. This one has a very pleasing green freshness and sweetness to it. It has a kind of a clubbing reputation, but Eros Eau de Parfum is slightly richer, ever so slightly slightly more mature than Eros Eau de Toilette and kind of like Ultramall, a fragrance that was pigeonholed as a clubbing fragrance, as a night out fragrance, but it does have more versatility than that. I'm only nine fragrances in, I have to speed up. Womo Signature by Ferragamo is the next fragrance on this list. This is one of those under the radar compliment pullers. It's one that you might not immediately think of as a compliment pulling fragrance, but it absolutely is. This has a very pleasant coffee note to it, which is again, maybe not a note that you would immediately think of as being in a compliment pulling scent, but it works extremely well here. It's got great push to it, great longevity, and between uh, this one and Salvatore Ferragamo's Womo, the original, I think those are the two best in the line. Now we're about to start heading into some fragrances that are more on the, what I would consider a little bit above average to average range. Invictus Legend is the first one that I wanna talk about as we head into this new territory. This does have that Invictus DNA, that bubble gum kind of feeling to it when you first spray it on, but it is a little more modern, more wearable, in my opinion, than the original Invictus, a little bit more interesting than that one. Still has those characteristics to it, just gives it a little more wearability and definitely has enough performance that you're not gonna have to worry about really reapplying this one or anything. Amouage up next. Boundless. Now this one I do consider above average as far as performance goes on the whole, but when you compare it to a lot of things in Amouage's library, it's not quite as strong as a lot of the other scents that they have. But this is very, very wearable. It's a spicy, sweet kind of tobacco scent with very high quality as you would expect 
from Amouage. And this one kind of gets more and more love as time goes on. When it initially launched, it was a little lukewarm response, but as time has gone on, people have really warmed up to it. Then we've got Angel Share from By Killian. Now this one longevity wise is good. Off my skin, it's quite nice. The projection is not as loud as you know, most all the fragrances that have come before it here. And overall, I think the performance here is still good. Angel Share, one of the more hyped fragrances that's come out over the past uh, few years. This one, very, very sweet, once again. It has a very well done booziness to it, but then when you look at the note breakdown, just about everything in there is a sweet note, one way or the other, whether it's warm sweet or sugary sweet, there's a lot of that in here. That being said, this list is about compliments, and this is a compliment monster, and uh, even with that sweetness, I still think it smells awesome. Aqua de Joe up next, Eau de Parfum. So now we're firmly into more average territory here. Aqua de Joe, Eau de Parfum, of course, uh, an evolution of the Eau de Toilette version of Aqua de Jo. Nice green facets to the fragrance. I don't know that it hit with as much ferocity as some stuff like Profumo or even Profundo. A lot of people stuck out sides on that, you know, I'm team Profumo, I'm team Profundo, whatever. Aqua de Jo, Eau de Parfum was more in the middle, just like, hey guys, I'm, uh, I'm the new flanker. But this stuff, of course, like all Aqua de Jo is amazing for positive attention. Next one, Valentino Uomo, Born in Roma, Yellow Dream. That's a mouthful. I'm not in love with this fragrance personally. I mean, I like it a little more now than when it first released, but still yet, I'm not in love with it. But when you're talking fragrances that pull compliments, positive attention, you can't just say, oh, no, I don't like it, therefore it does not pull compliments. That's not how it works. And yes, this stuff does, absolutely. Especially for younger guys, middle-aged guys, this works very well for people in that age range. It has kind of a similarity to Stronger With You in the way that it comes across, although a bit fresher. Ah, oh, an office classic up next, Prada Loam. Yes, Prada Loam. Very soapy, fresh, powdery, clean. Good longevity on this. It lasts a pretty good amount of time off my skin. Uh, the projection, though, is a little bit closer in. To be fair though, with this type of fragrance, the way that it does come across with that cleanliness, that freshness, you would expect that. You wouldn't expect it to fill a room up, so it does its job admirably. Prada Loam, as I said, a great office time fragrance, and just overall, a really top-notch designer iris fragrance. Guilty, up next, Gucci Guilty, the Eau de Toilette. Gets a decent amount of hate in the fragrance community, but uh, as I've said a number of times, if you want something that's gonna pull attention, this is up there with some of the best designers available. It's just really, really good at being a people pleaser. It is safe. I mean, it's very safe. So if you're looking for something that's more out there, more unique or whatever, maybe it wouldn't work for you. But if you do want something safe, clean, with a nice little bit of sweetness that people are going to enjoy, gotta check that one out. Burberry Hero next up, another one that does not get a massive amount of love. And as we're working into Hero here, we're working into fragrances that are on that softer side of things. This is like on the slightly below average side as far as overall performance goes, or I'd say average to slightly below average, right in there. Because for some people, fragrances are gonna work a little better off their skin than others, so it's gonna be kind of in that range. Now this is another one that's very safe. It is a woody fragrance, but it's that modern type of woodiness where you don't have any potential divisiveness, you know, like any real life that could come from those woody notes, uh, like a spicy undertone or overtone or kind of a smokiness or anything like that. Most of that's been scrubbed away here. Still though, it's really not that bad. Like if you're going for an everyday fragrance, like one that you can wear year round, this stuff excels at that, daytime or nighttime. Now a great buy from Discounters, Coach for Men. Very affordable, this one, so it's not gonna break the uh, the piggy bank. It gives you that versatility that you're looking for in a blue fragrance, you know. If you don't have the money to pick up a, a Y or a Sauvage like we talked about before, then this, from Discounters is a great alternative. The packaging is nice, it's classy, it's from a brand that people know, and it doesn't come across smelling super cheap. The only thing that I could knock it on is maybe the performance could be a little better. La Nuit de Lome, the next fragrance from Yves Saint Laurent. This is the original Eau de Toilette. Not much of a surprise, really. I mean, La Nuit de Lome, that's been the knock on it. 
you know, people always love to say, oh, Lana Weed alone, it would be so amazing, so perfect if it lasted longer, if it projected more. And this fragrance and cardamom are linked forever until the end of time, kind of like Aventus with pineapple. So much so that uh, very often people will smell a fragrance, they'll see cardamom in there and they'll be like, I wonder if it's like Lana Weed alone. And to be fair, I don't actually think that it's a bad thing that this doesn't perform like gangbusters. That's something it shares in common with the next one, the one, Eau de Toilette. This also does not have great performance. It sits pretty close to the skin, doesn't last all that long, especially compared to some of the others in this list. But like Lana Weed Alone, it's a perfect date night fragrance. And that's because this one, along with La Nuit, they're not going to be too aggressive unless you dump the bottle on yourself, which I probably wouldn't do. They become more alluring, more inviting, which is sexy when it's used properly. It's the type of fragrance that can pull people in, you know, it, it's the type of scent where they catch just a faint waft of it and then they want to come in closer. This and Lana Wee pull that off very well. So even though they're toward the bottom of this list, it's not really a knock on them. Then we got Afternoon Swim from Louis Vuitton. Very pricey, as you would expect. I mean, anything from this brand is going to be pricey. It's mainly a citrusy summertime scent, the kind of fragrance that you would wear to the beach or on vacation. I mean, that's kind of what the name is giving across also, Afternoon Swim. The quality is very high. It took a little while for it to grow on me. At first, I didn't like the way the citrus came across in this, but as I wore it more, started to like it a lot. But as with a lot of summertime fragrances based around citrus, not great performance. Also the same thing with these next two which I'm going to present as just one choice, Dior Homme Cologne and Jimmy Choo Man Ice. They smell similar. That's why they're both here at the same time. Both of these have kind of a refreshing iced lemonade citrusy blast when you spray them on. They smell amazing. Dior Homme Cologne was one of my favorite summer scents for a long time. They go their own ways a little bit as they dry down, uh, but they do still smell similar enough that Jimmy Choo Man Ice, if you don't want to spend Dior Homme Cologne money, is a great alternative, so. Both of those. Oh, this one, Frappant, Humaniste. I love this stuff. The opening's so good. One of my favorite openings ever. This citrusy gin kind of blast with a, a great sparkly sweetness, fresh, a tinge of aromatics. Oh, really good. And then it, it dries down so fast into almost nothing, just little wafts. It's one that I don't regret buying because I, I do love the opening so much, but there's just not a ton to it after that. And you can run through a bottle real quick. As long as people can smell it though, compliment fuller. Last in this list, Tiffany and Love for Helm. I love the bottle. The atomizer is really good. It's a pressurized atomizer. The opening is really nice, classy, fresh, sweet, kind of a new take on a blue fragrance to an extent. Not really a new take. It's following tropes that blue fragrances have done. It's just, it doesn't smell in the opening exactly like any other blue fragrance. So it could be this great new addition to the blue fragrance family. You know, you don't need Dolce & Gabbana K, you need this, something like that. But no, the performance lets this one down in a, in a pretty big way. Now I can make excuses for a lot of these other ones. You know, I can say the one, for example, the whole date thing, but Tiffany and love for Helm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to make excuses on that. If somebody smells it after you've just sprayed it on, yeah, high likelihood they're gonna say it smells amazing, but pretty quickly it dries down into just kind of a weak remnant of what once was, and so it's hard to recommend it. Still though, I like the opening. All right guys, there we go. I didn't talk fast enough. This video is super long, I'm sorry. I am gonna jet now. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.